Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the midday, the beginning of the week. I'm Art Rascone. A good Monday here. We have a lot to catch up on, especially the latest political headlines. A lot occurred over the weekend, or should we say didn't occur, perhaps. Joining us now, ABC News political director Rick Klein. Rick, it is always good to see you. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure, Art. Great to be with you. Let's start with uh, talking, of course, about the Democratic infighting over President Biden's agenda. I think that in January of this year, we would have never presumed that this we would be where we are today. Yeah, I mean, we're here in the middle of uh, the beginning of October and uh, the agenda is stalled and you're seeing it track with President Biden's approval ratings. I think the divisions inside the Democratic Party, though, haven't gone away. And if anything, they're more accentuated now. You have a situation where there's an utter standoff between the moderate and progressive wings of the party. And President Biden um, caught somewhere in the middle of that. Uh, he clearly has a side. He clearly has preferences, but he's going to have to, to trim back his agenda very substantially if he wants it to uh, to advance. Absolutely. And he He's been there. He understands how the Senate, by the, you know, the House has worked. Uh, let's talk yeah. about Pelosi for a minute. Um, whose fault is this? Is it hers? Is it the, mm -hmm. is it the president's? Well, Pelosi set a deadline, and it wasn't a deadline that she was able to make good on. That's a rare setback for her. Uh, the proximate cause was that liberals, progressives, said, no, we're not going to vote for this smaller deal until we know that moderates are, are on board for the bigger deal. But by promising this, uh, she is, uh, Pelosi has, has alienated quite a, a few moderates who feel like uh, right. her word was on the line. They feel like the trust has been frayed by this. And they're standing here now with, with a, not a lot of trust to go around. And frankly, they're calling each other uh, lots of names and even saying that they're, they've been dishonest with each other, their fellow Democrats. But frankly, the, the issue has been that they've been too honest at times and uh, they just don't agree on the, on the path forward. Yeah. All right. Another big issue, of course, the opening day of the, the Supreme Court's new term, a conservative court, but uh, some landmark rulings like abortion could be there as well as guns and religion. Yeah, this is where you see the real impact of the of, of the Donald Trump uh, presidency and its impact on the Supreme Court. He and, and named three justices to the court, a third of the entire court, including, of course, replacing uh, the, the liberal icon, the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That block now has control, potentially, of the direction of the court. John Roberts has been there for a long time now, but he's never had a court that was quite this potentially conservative. Roe v. Wade, uh, in the wake of that Texas law and a similar, uh, even stricter Mississippi law against abortion, is going to be tested. Uh, yes, religion, um, anything around gun control. This is a very consequential term, and I think it could have long-lasting ramifications even beyond politics about how people live their lives. Yeah, we, there's a lot, you know, every, all eyes are watching the Supreme Court, but, you know, conservatively speaking, talking about the, 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 the court, it didn't always go the, go the way of President Trump earlier, um, and so he, even he was surprised. It's a great point, and, and predicting where the court will land based on ideology has long been folly. There have been plenty of, uh, of appointees in both parties that have ended up disappointing some of the political backers, and that's a point you've heard justices make recently, is that it is a nonpartisan branch, even though they are named and, and confirmed through the, the, the partisan political process. But where it goes now, I think this is the true test, because these are issues that you can't really avoid. Uh, former President Trump said that if he was elected, then Roe v. Wade would go away basically automatically. That hasn't happened, but right. uh, this, this might be the best opportunity to, to, to test that once and for all. Yeah. And, and will that is that a sure thing? I mean, that that to the, the, the Texas law will rise up to the Supreme Court? No, no. It, 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 you know, we know that there's another law, though, in Mississippi that is being considered. But whether they decide, whether the, the justices decide to, to take on Roe v. Wade or uh, narrow the scope of it or to, to duck the issue procedurally is up to them. They get to decide what they take and what they don't. Uh, and, and as you know, on the Texas law, they skirted the basic question of constitutionality, uh, at least for the time being. Um, it's likely mm -hmm. to come back to the court in some form or fashion. But in the meantime, for the past month, it has been the law of the land in Texas. Well, a lot to consider. Rick Klein, thank you so much. You're always offering words of wisdom. We appreciate uh, you joining us this afternoon. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. All right, let's turn to weather now. Beautiful, gorgeous weather outside, and even better the remainder of the week. Let's get to Rachel Breyers. Rachel? Yeah, I mean, that's a great way to put it. We actually had this week front roll in last night, and drier air is making its way on in behind the front. Now, this is drier air, not necessarily cooler air pushing on in. So as we head into this afternoon, our temperatures still expected to climb up into the mid to upper 80s, but that drier air is going to make it feel a lot more comfortable outside. And right now, our dew points, which is a good way to measure 
measure how much moisture is in the air, are actually pretty good coming in in the 60s. So if you compare that to our chart over here, it's still a little sticky, but not too bad. And as we head into this afternoon, afternoon more of that dry air is going to continue to move in, can actually dropping our dew point even more into the 50s and into the low 60s. So it is going to feel pretty fantastic as we head throughout the day today. And the good news is, is that this drier air is actually going to stick around as we head throughout much of the work week. We'll start to see those dew points rise a little bit over the weekend, but it's still going to feel very nice outside. So make sure you take advantage of this gorgeous weather. Now with that drier air in place, that will actually allow our overnight temperatures to drop even more all the way down into the upper 50s and low 60s and this is what we are expecting overnight tonight going into Tuesday morning but I have good news because that will also be continuing throughout this week low temperatures going to drop down into the low 60s pretty much throughout the entire work week so it is going to feel pretty fantastic as we push throughout the week if you have anything you want to get done outdoors this week will be a perfect time for it lots of sunshine coming up as we head into this next weekend as well as into next week we'll start to see some of that moisture slow making its way back in but we don't actually have any rain chances coming up until next Tuesday and Wednesday and right now those are just coming in as a 20% chance. Okay very good thank you Rachel looks like a gorgeous week ahead and that will do it for the midday thanks for joining us I'm Art Rascone we'll be back here of course tomorrow on Tuesday have a wonderful day.